Hey there, everybody. Welcome back with the Play Apple Platypus, the name. And today, we're going to talk about August. Hopefully, I said his name right. I'm pretty sure that's how you say it. Um, so, yeah, we're going to kind of go over his kit. I'm going to tell you about him, and then we're going to show him off a little bit. Um, but besides that, really quick, I want to bore you with something else. I want to kind of talk about what you can expect from my content going forward. Um, and I don't want to make this a whole video like I kind of did last time. Like, oh, the plat's back. That kind of stuff. Because, um, I don't know. I just didn't like the vibe. So, I just want to do something really quick here for like two minutes. Expect videos nearly every day. I'm going to try to come up with video ideas every day. But they're, the caveat is I'm going to be more casual. Like, you're probably not going to see 4 a.m. plat as much as you have in the past. Um, where I'm getting up at 4 a.m. to see the new update to make a video on it and I'm trying to get stuff out the day you know the news comes out I'm gonna kind of try to decide videos in advance and I basically just don't have enough time to really really sit and think about what my videos are gonna be so I'm gonna try to kind of record more in advance when I do have time because I'm, I'm working a lot these days but the the positive of this system is that you should be able to get videos nearly every day. Like today, I'm going to record like three videos. So they're like, well, hey, we got some videos set up. But anyway, besides that, just kind of uh, wanted to let you know where I'm at. And uh, I'll be, I'll still play other games and stuff. I'm going to do COTC for now. But if you come into my streams, I might stream Baldur's Gate 3 instead of COTC. I might stream COTC though. Um, but also like Sea of Stars comes out. I'm going to cover that game pretty heavily and I might temporarily put COTC on the back burner while like Sea of Stars is out and I'm playing through that for the first time and then come back to COTC maybe like a month or two, uh, basically of a break at that point, but we'll see how it all goes. But that's kind of what you can expect. Anyway, for now, let us look at our boy here. Should I heal him? Let's, let's heal him up the full, you know, we already were at the end. I forgot you have to rest at inns in this game, honestly. I, I'm just thinking, like, oh, when I fast travel, you fully heal. I, I played a lot of um, Honkai Star Rail. And I will say that quality of life thing is a little nice, where I don't have to go to a, a stupid inn. But it's really no big deal. So let's take a look here at Agust. So this character is currently pullable. Actually, before we even go there, let's. Um, he is currently pullable. Uh, don't judge me. But as you can see here, we have the um, Champions of Memories. And <laughs> if we actually come all the way down here, you can see the step up. You might notice the step up is at the bottom because I did do all four rounds. But I do have all the characters, which is one of the reasons why I'm going to make these videos. But so he is currently pullable right here until... When does this go? Until 8-9. So only a little over a week left. Not that much time. Um but we do got him so now's the get while the getting's good if you're interested in this unit so august you might remember him as the master of fame the playwright in the first basically one of the first three main bosses of the game um very very cool character in my opinion so what does he actually do though so very first i think we're actually going to kind of go over his ultimate in, in a weird way, it seems like it's an afterthought, but it's kind of not here because you're going to be trying to use it a lot. His ultimate is very simple. Deal uh, dagger damage five times. It's actually, like, not that great of an ultimate, but it's not bad. I mean, five attacks is... It's it's like... it's If this was a normal ability, it would be, like, the most insane broken ability. But as an ultimate, I feel like it's not, like, absolutely broken, but it is very good. Um, being able to do good damage and break five shields is no doubt good. But he has two passives here, obviously, as everyone does essentially i remember where they're at um so raise dagger and tome damage itself by 20 percent. now he is a thief he does not equip tomes but he does have some tome skills which is pretty cool um and 20 percent is like pretty good but really it's about this first passive here impassionate self when an ally is incapitated or you use an ultimate technique so this is kind of what his kit is built around um, is trying to be impassioned, impassioned. And um, so it does happen whenever an ally is incapitated. So you can actually cheese this out really easily. You can just have like a, a level 20 Jose on your team or something and then let him get slapped and die. And you have to give up one of your eight slots, but then you can always have this with an easy character that gets uh, incapitated. Or you could have an ultimate go off. Um, he has to use his own ultimate, not whenever 
It doesn't actually say, or whenever you use an ultimate technique, I assume it means it has to be himself that uses an ultimate technique um, by you referring to himself. Um, but yeah, so this is actually going up quite a lot because once allies start dying in this game, they're usually dying fast. They usually use lose allies turn after turn once they actually start dying. But 30% physical attack and elemental attack and changes some skills so it's last four turns it's an insane attack buff it's right at the cap and then it's going to change some of his skills which is why we went over that first so these are the three main skills that it's going to change but let's take a look just right here so sanguine journal sanguine basically these this and the blade of pretense are very similar they're powerful nuke attacks that also lower resistance of the either blade or tome but if you're impassioned, you get a guaranteed crit and you restore three BP of yourself. So that means if you have, even if you have zero BP and you just use this while impassioned, it brings you up to three. That means for the rest of your turns, you could like blade of pretense, blade of pretense with max BP, max BP, max BP, because it's like four turns, right? So you can do it um, that many times. So it's very, very insane. Giving yourself three BP is nuts and a guaranteed crit. And it has insane potency, not insane potency, but good potency. Um, and the fact that it lowers the resistance is just so nice because that's going to be stacking with your things that are like lowering enemy defense and stuff already, right? Like if you got Viola on the team and Viola lowers their defense by 25%, then you lower their dagger resist by 10%. Then he has plus 30% attack and yada, yada, blah, blah. You see how these uh, multipliers are adding up but then heart of, darkness of heart might be his most iconic ability in my opinion deal elemental dark damage to all foes two times with a potency of 95 not insane but it's still very good 190 um and lower physical defense and elemental defense by 15 percent. so that's pretty good too i this feels kind of like i at this stage like is that identical to primrose actually which is like primrose's best ability Let's take a look. I'm actually, because that's so similar to Primrose, I'm going to go take a look really quick. God, how many fucking menus are there in this game? I mean, come on, everyone. Calm down. We're just talking with the plat. Primrose, it's Spell Song. What is, what is Spell Song? Elemental, Dark Damage, all foes. It has higher potency, but it is the lower physical and elemental defense. So it's literally 10 potency weaker. It's only 10 potency weaker. All right. But if you're impassioned... It does four attacks, so it actually comes way better than Primrose's very best attack. Um, and it does do the same. So lowering defense and elemental defense is good. The fact this ability is so good and I sometimes don't use it to instead use other abilities should tell you how insane this is. Um, but yeah, lowered for three turns if impassioned instead of what? Instead of two turns, that the extra turn's not that bad. But this hits four times, so this becomes a nuke very powerful great shield breaker so he's not, like once he's impassioned his abilities are insane but so this is like the core of his kit and it's insanely strong but that is not all he does of course he has other abilities here some more impressive some less impressive but the some of the least impressive stuff is like quad edge right four attacks of daggers that's insane uh triple tome attack anti-attack two you know lowering things defense it's not actually as good as viola's right but still like the fact that he has all this is insane so um these two are kind of interesting right four i mean four showed shadow impact that's pretty good just in general single foe four times so he's a great shield breaker right he has a triple book a, a quad dagger a quad two different quad darkness and then poems of death we'll get into in a second uh but spotlight and part single ally with physical attack up um 30 percent and crit by 30%. Also, this is actually the ability that I, I was planning on doing last, but here we are now. Um, and part of single ally, so you give them physical attack up 30% and crit 30%. Then you give them defense down 30%. I think if you give them defense down and someone else buffs their defense, like you have a Lynette, I think it'll just like remove it. I think it'll kick it off. I don't think you'll have defense down and defense up. I, I could be wrong. I, it's been a while since I've really kind of got into the nitty gritty of the buffs, debuffs. Uh, but you provoke all enemies to attack the target. So this is a, you could force someone to be a tank, quote unquote. However, they've got no defense, but they become very strong. So this ability is super cool and interesting, in my opinion. Um, and I actually think it works really good on characters like um, Tidus. Titus. T I like Titus just because it's the name of the Final Fantasy X character. But I think it's Tidus. Um, 
because he's guaranteed to revive himself when he dies or like a2 who can guarantee go down to one hp before dying so these are some things that combine with it but also maybe it's just good on like a gildroy and maybe he could just clear his own defense down and he just becomes taunted with insane attack and crit um so if you can get rid of the defense down with like a lynette just bouncing around or like doing a, a certain dance like a lion's dance or something then this is like absolutely an insane ability all the time the only bad thing about it is that august won't be able to attack uh you know the turn he uses it but that's okay um but being able to provoke all enemies is insane as well so it's a very good ability but it's dangerous like it's a scary situational ability you're not going to be using this every turn um but it is a very cool ability and then finally poems of death which is based off the ability of spotlight i thought it was called poems of death i got it mixed up deal physical tome damage to a random foe three times so not quite the um it's just a better version of triple beat right it's actually literally just a better version because it does the same potency except it's random instead of single foe um, which could be better could be worse have a moderate chance to inflict poison or paralysis with every attack so that's a pretty good ability too so he's got no stinkers his biggest stinker is anti-attack because you probably just won't ever find room for it, but definitely not something that's like weak, you know? I'm going to actually put spotlight on my guy. Mine right now doesn't really break shields, but that's okay. Um, What did I take off? We'll put that back on. So those are his abilities, his passives. Now, um, oh, look at support skills. You could turn them on or off. That's fun. You can make it so he doesn't become uh, impassioned. So the other other thing I am going to go over in these videos is I am going to start going over the A4s for a couple reasons. One, because I have one and I used to be like, it's irrelevant. No one will ever get it. And it's true that I spent to get this one. So I don't think many people are going to have this, but there are a lot of older characters that I'm starting to get awakened higher now. Like, and I have some A4 accessories now in general, and I'm thinking that this will be a good like even if it's not applicable to people now in like six months or more it might become applicable basically right so we're just going to kind of talk about it really quick play rights quill this is insane raise dagger and tome damage dealt by 10 percent. you also get physical and elemental attack 70 and then <laughs> the start of battle fill your own ultimate technique gauge up to 100 percent. and this could be equipped on anybody by the way that means as soon as the battle starts, you get to just go off. You get to go ham sandwich on these cheeseburgers, if you know what I mean. Well, let's go outside, and we'll show you exactly how it works. He has it equipped right now, but it's worth noting this could be equipped on literally any character. And so you might want to do not even this character, which obviously he has a lot to gain from it. But if he's not going to be in the fight because you don't need thieves or you're in a warrior's tower or whatever... Um, there's going to definitely be situations where you're going to want maybe just an AOE. Maybe you have Cyrus and you just want to do, you know, every time a fight starts, you want to be able to use his ultimate so you don't have to worry about it. So let's make sure we're on times zero. And then we're going to just use this. Hopefully this guy is strong enough to not die in one shot here. There we go. So check his ultimate out. He gets us to do it at the first turn every time. And he even transforms into his god self it's so fucking cool and he's obviously he's well voice acted because his voice lines are probably all pretty much in the game i wonder if they actually recorded new voice lines for this character or if they could just take all the stuff that he did in the past and do it also if you guys aren't using 9s you should use 9s he's like my favorite character in the game almost that's one of the things I love about this game is how many of the characters that are, like, free that I really like. But let's take a look here. So if we look at... He doesn't have enough juice yet. I want to get him up to three just to kind of do a final show off. Oh, you motherfucker! All right. Give me a second. We're, we're going to go somewhere. I'm not editing this video. I don't. I already told you I'm limited on time. I'm not going to spend the extra time to do that. Let's go ahead and go rate... Um, fuck, I don't know. Here, what level are you? 65 that should be plenty i'm so far behind you guys i gotta i gotta get my shit together so i could finally get all these soul weapons and stuff i'm gonna build the fuck out of tilken that's gonna be a youtube video for sure but i don't know when you know what you don't run from me i run from you fuck this guy i don't want him I don't, this is not what it's about 
Those guys... What are you doing? All right. I just want to show you the voice acting of the character, all right? Also, I like the little 100% icon that shows up. They just, like, they didn't cut corners on these characters. I know that individual characters might not be insanely hard in this game, not like Honkai Star Rail, where, like, you have to build this entire 3D model with animations and stuff, but, like, it's still, they're doing good work here. But listen to this. Not only does he yell, but you also, also he yells. One second. Come on, do it, buddy. Marvelous! I love this character. So he does this like pretty good damage in general. I mean, it's kind of hard. The damage on my videos is going to be kind of relative because like, yeah, it, it's going to seem like good damage sometimes and other times it might not um, be based on what weapons you have and what I'm fighting and this or that, right? So I feel like um, the damage is not as relevant as kind of showing off what he does and uh, what it looks like and kind of giving you an idea, telling you if I think it's good or not. Overall, I think this character is borderline. I, I don't want to call anything a must pull, but I do think he's probably one of the most powerful characters in the game. Still, maybe this is what's crazy is he might not be the strongest of the three that they just released, um, but he has the best A4 accessory, I think, in the entire game that adds so much flexibility and fun battle ideas where you can now do some really, really crazy stuff. If there's any like ultimates that seem out of this world and like oh this ultimate's like so cool if i could do this on the first turn of combat like maybe it's just like a lynette super buff um i think that this character is absolutely i think it's like the best accessory i also think this character is just fucking badass and good my favorite character in the game if you're lucky enough to get him i think you're gonna have a really wonderful time but if you decide you gotta save because there's bigger better stuff coming they're always bit here's the thing this is a gotcha baby there's always bigger and better stuff coming no matter what, you know? When the game released a year ago, it was like, oh, in three months, you, you got to save for three months because of this. And then Cyrus comes out or whatever, and everyone's like, we're not spending on Cyrus. We're going to save because for the for this. And then this thing comes out like, oh, we're not spending because the one year. Now the one year comes out like we're not, we're not spending because this EX Fiora is coming out or something, you know? So it's like there's always, there's always something to save for. And you'll never be at a spot where you're like, oh, well, there's nothing to save for for the next year. That's just obviously they're not going to do that for the game. Um, but that doesn't mean you can't be wise with your spending. But there are times where eventually you got to decide when you're going to spend and what you want your not spend money necessarily. But you want to use your freemium gems um, and decide what you want on your account. And this is what I wanted. Uh, and I spent money to get it as well. So that's all for today. Much love for Platypus is for Platypus. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you in the next flip flop. Have fun flipping. Have fun flopping. Peace.